Okay, so my presentation is on the Night Realms. Um, it's an original content thing that uh, some people in Draft House might have heard of it, but this is kind of an offshoot from the Dreamscape stuff that is kind of like something that's sort of like Bash, where it's not technically related at all to, Dreams or to Draft House, but people from the Draft House created it, and like a lot of people from the Draft House are in there. Well, not a lot, um, but, you know, yeah. But yeah, so um, basically it's this whole thing now. It's the prequel. St it's a lot of prequel stuff for the Dreamscape. So we're gonna we're just gonna start right from the beginning with motherfucking creation myth, baby. Um, so there's an astral dreadnought in D and D. There's also something called an astral dreadnought. Um, this is not that. It looks like a whale from Dishonored, which is just kind of an eldritch, like big sperm whale looking thing. That's sort of what you want to picture here, except it's made out of fabric. Don't think too hard about any of this, I promise. One of the influences for this everything is the game Journey, so if you know anything about the game Journey, you will understand at least some of the aesthetic here. But, yeah. So, there's an astral dreadnought called the Guardian. They swallow this thing called the Anchor. It's this glowing blue thing that's, um, yeah, it's a glowing blue thing. Uh, but they swallow it, and they become a god, because it gives them god powers, because that makes sense. Um, <laughs> and so, sort of within the Guardian, this whole plane is created. You know, like the whole, the earth is on the turtle's back sort of stuff. Um, but it's called the Night Realms, and it's fucking empty as shit, because it was just made. Um, and so the Guardian gets really sad, because it's fucking empty, and they're lonely as hell. Um, because all the astro other all the other astral dreadnoughts are mean, and everything else wants to eat them, because that's how it works in the primordial ooze of space. Um, <laughs> so, um, there's also something called the Nothingness. The Nothingness is named Nishta. The Guardian wanted to be friends with Nishta. Nishta was not about that, because that's a lot of everything, and that's too much for the Nothing. So they ran away, and the Guardian got sad, so they started making other things. <laughs> <clears throat> Welcome to the Night Realms. It's like the Twilight Realm from Legend of Zelda, all of the fey places and books, and also like cool high fantasy and the game Journey. Except everything isn't in a desert yet. Um, <laughs> everyone has non-human left fey and masks for faces, or are basically shapeshifter biblical-esque angels. Um, it's pretty as fuck and also gone now because it's a motherfucking ghost-filled desert now that screams constantly to anyone who can hear. We're having a great time in current, present night realms. Um, ignore the last stuff because it's not important right now. It's spoilers. Um. <laughs> so, here's your first baby. This is the first baby ever made by the Guardian. The baby is boy. The Sun Man. A good, good boy. Uh, incandescent, who, um, he has a few health issues because, um, it's a whole thing of, like, the Guardian made him. Yay! The Guardian made a technically a mortal with too much god power in him, so it kind of, like, threatens to destroy him sometimes, um, but he's very good and sweet and he's trying his best all of the time. Um... <laughs> And with the cool song Rifflin language that they sing, it's in song, and generally it's a gender-neutral language. So he's the OG original he-him. Um, and the art here is by Soto. Some of the art here is also by Soto that you're going to see. And there's uh, a piece by Heart, Heartless, um, that is also included because they also help with this project. It's not just me looking like a maniac. Um... And then, here's Baby Time 2. This is Solo again. They're tall, sad, and gay. Um, <laughs> they weave fate. Um, it's a literal thing where fate is essentially this great big tapestry and everyone is strands within it. So it's not like Soul of Agant controls fate, it's more like they're weaving records of everything that's going on at once. Not that they necessarily know, but it's sort of like, you know, magic channeling bullshit. Um, and so, uh, the fates, uh, because the fate thing has like three faces, you know, that whole thing, um, gave them a very important job because it's called a question with capital A and capital Q. And Soul of Regat is basically put to task of answering this question. 
Because fate asks them to. And what, what do you do then whenever fate asks you to do something? You just do it because that's, yeah. Um, here's baby time three and four. Get used to seeing baby time number because there's a lot of them. Um, <laughs> these are the twin of uh, one of the set of twins. There's Raconteur, which is the person on the bottom, and then Archimedes, who's the snake on the top. Well, snake is such a loose term here because the thing with gardeners, which is what they're called, these guys, the whole like race of them is they can turn between the shape that raconteur has and something like the shape archimedes has um where it's called a fabric shape and it's a whole thing um they're cool he uh he who funky shapeshifters um but archimedes is essentially the first doctor and raconteur is kind of the first inventor um archimedes has very big opinions on how guardian does a lot of things that i end up talking about um but yeah, that's just how it is sometimes. Sometimes God is also your parent, and your parent fucking sucks. Um, and just like a, they're not actively malicious, but man, that, that don't this person should not have been wandering around making babies and races and whole planes full of people. Um, this one gets a sketch page because I didn't finish uh, their reference. This is Redomance. Anamance is, um, you know, the cool sort of Hephaestus Aphrodite-esque one of the siblings because they use the cool blood magic that Rifflin and Gardeners can do. Um, <laughs> they use the cool blood magic and the power of God and anime on their side um, to sort of like basically, sort of like Archimedes, they're kind of like a health person where they like fix things but also they do like infrastructure and smithing and stuff like that a lot of the blood magic stuff because um their anatomy is very weird because they're like clay people um like wonder woman but also they bleed liquid metal and it's very confusing and don't worry about it because it's normal um they're not human at all so don't Throw all of your expectations of anything human-esque out the window, because it's it's not happening. Um, it's not happening. Get used to it. Baby number six! This is Karina Mar. Soto drew this. Um, they are a sunder, they, she, lesbian, who wants to kick Incandescent's ass because they care about him, and he's very confused about it, because they don't know how to talk about their emotions. <laughs> Um, they run a ba a school with baby time number seven, and you'll see him next. And they teach the arcane, and the arcane are, I'm gonna explain, so don't worry about it. If you see something you don't understand, don't worry about it, because I'll either explain it, or you'll have to ask me later, because <laughs> there's a lot of things to cover here. Um, but yeah, Karina Mars, super cool, super strong, very sunder, um, and very fabulous. We'll kick your ass. Absolutely. Um, this is baby number seven. Um, Himbo. No, actually, his name is Hecatos. Um, he also teaches arcane. Whereas Karina Mar focuses on a lot of physical stuff. Um, Hecatos is like the fighty with magic y one. Um, accidentally made a baby once um, because of how things happen sometimes. Um, the baby is. Okay. The baby is definitely okay. Nothing bad ever happened to this baby. I might be lying. Okay, moving on. Uh, so, <laughs> I didn't finish Cremazins. Cremazins is the one with the red. Um, but I did end up pulling um, some of the layers of a picture I did with Sunset Orange. Um, because these are babies eight and nine. I said there was a lot of them. There's a lot of them. Um, so, Cremazin was tasked by fate, much like Solovagant was, to make, essentially, masks of everyone. Um, so if, like, someone is born, uh, Cremazin makes their mask, even if they're halfway across the plane, because of magic BS. Um, and it kind of serves as, like, a constant citizen registry sort of thing of, like, all of the different masks that have ever happened, which is very cool to think about. 
Um, Sunset Orange is not as, um, ambitious. Um, they're a trickstery shepherd who, uh, literally shepherds sheep. And they work as a messenger with, uh, babies 10 and 11. Um, aka Esthetite and Metanoia. I don't at me about how to pronounce Esthetite's name. That's how I've been pronouncing it since I saw the word. So everyone has to live with that. Um, but the three of them work as messengers and go-betweens between all of the other siblings, which involves a lot of traveling. It's, it's a very thankless job. All of them are very underappreciated. Um, but Esthetite's the one in pink. is the one in green. Um, Esthetite is sort of the mean, also sunder, sword lesbian. Um, <laughs> and Metanoia is the mute, mute telepathic painter slash healer one. You know, they all have things they're good at. They all have hobbies. They're all allowed to have hobbies, you know, for once. Um, and they're technically triplets with baby number 12, but we don't like him. We don't like him at all. This is also by Soto. Um, this is, uh, Antioch. Antiochus, whatever. We just call him Anti because that's exactly the kind of attitude he brings. He's a jealous, conniving little bastard who's the whole reason everything goes to shit. He gaslights, girl, has a girl boss, and fucking gatekeeps the hell out of everything. Um, he's just a little bastard man, and we hate him a lot. Um, you know? Sometimes you just have one of those problematic faves. He is not a fave, but he's very problematic. Um, <laughs> and we hit the last baby. Thirteen of them. There's so many. This is Kiesin. Kiesin is baby. They're very powerful, very strong, best baby. Um, they're just a little creature. Um, do not mess with them or about... Ten other siblings will beat you to death, um, physically, emotionally, spiritually. Um, they and Incandescent are generally the avatars for the Guardian, because Guardian is a god, and sometimes they do that. It's a whole thing. They're very powerful, this Kiesin. Um, they're also Hearts, one of Hearts, like, yeah, Heart and Soto. MVPs, my beloveds. Um, out here with this crazy-ass fae bullshit we're doing. Here's a sibling height chart, so you have an idea of the hilarity here. I need everyone to know, for context, Kiesin, the blue one, the light blue one near the end, that's 5'9". I need you to know, Incandescent is 8 foot tall. <laughs> and so you look at them and you're like, wow, some of them are kind of short, wow. You know, Solovagat, the second one's pretty tall. Yeah, Solovagat's like 12 feet tall, y'all. They're, they're very tall. They're very tall. They're very tall. Get used to it. Um, but yes. Um, why do we care about any of them? Why do we care? Why do we care? Why do we care at all? Um, because even though, um, the garden, the race of gardeners, um, were made before all 13 of them were finished. They're the original 13 members because they're the ones directly created by the Guardian. They're basically demigods and they're very, very cool. And they kind of help shape society, except society kind of sucks. Um, because society's like, oh, you're kind of demigods. Um, we're gonna put you in a position where it's like taboo for you to do some stuff, including like having significant others for, like, you know, their lifetime and all this and that, and just really make you guys do a lot of shit that we're not gonna appreciate. Um, so, yeah. Um, it's great. <laughs> None of them wanted this, so we're all just sitting here. Um. And now you can actually know some of the plot, because I've told you some of the most important cast members. That's not all of them, though. There's more people involved. It's a very complex web we weave here. Um, and so the Guardian makes the gardeners, who are averagely eight foot tall to take care of the night realms and can shapeshift between two forms, the ones with hands and the ones that are fabric shaped. 
Um, the Guardian makes rifflins in order to populate the plane and do shit. They're sort of like um, the people from Journey. Also kind of similar if you play the game Sky by the same company. That game company. That's literally their name. I don't make this shit up. The Guardian also makes the Arcane, who are the shape-shifting, biblical-esque, angel-type motherfuckers who are meant to protect the plane. They have, at times, generally, they can have two sets of wings, three sets of arms, and a pair of goddamn leggies. Do you know how many limbs that is? Do you know how many appendages that is? Do you know what kind of anatomical nightmare that is? Thank God they can shapeshift, because if I saw some Spider-Man-looking motherfucker being like, do not be afraid, I would be like, you know what? Actually, I'm just gonna leave. I'm just gonna leave. Um, goodbye. I'm, I'm, I'm done. Thanks. Thanks. Um, so then after they make the everything that's in the Night Realms, there's this whole thing that they end up making called the Veil. The Veil is kind of the protective blankie, the security blankie around the Night Realms, because something from that primordial Uzi space shit they were flying around and crashes into the Night Realms and really screws everything up. Um, and with that comes the Master of the Veil, because the problem with making your security blanket is that it traps the souls of the people inside. So then they reincarnate, and it's a lot of weird shit. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Fine. Um, and then, yeah, here's the Weave of Fate, who has three faces slash avatars, who holds power over even the Guardian themselves because they're also subject to fate, and they pose the question to Soul of Agat to be answered. Society! We love a good society. So, in the order of the picture, there is a Rifflin, a Gardener, and an Arcane. They're pretty easy to tell apart. If you get confused about a Rifflin versus a, um, Gardener. Gardeners have a veil of scarves over their face. Even if they tie it back, they're there. That's how you tell them apart. Arcane being shape-shifting motherfuckers who don't follow any goddamn rules... Um, can sometimes look like a Rifflin or a Gardener. Don't, there are ways to tell them apart, though. Um, but yes. This is them. Um, <laughs> these are actually characters, very minor characters that show up at some point. They're parents to someone called Ravenite. Um, all three of them. It's very delightful. They're all very sweet and anxious people. Um, so... Let's get into the actual, like, nitty-gritty of what the hell happens to the Night Realms, because things happen. Society, you know, the creation of the wheel, the idea of general maths, healthcare, um, evolution of man. No, ignore that last one. It didn't happen here. Um, <laughs> basically, the Guardian makes all the 13 siblings. Society is beginning to flourish coming out of, you know, whatever age it is, modernized, you know. They aren't to computers yet at this point. Trust me, they get there eventually. Um, Guardian's like, okay, um, apparently gods are supposed to do this thing and fucks off. Um, <laughs> that's it. Um, and after that, they start appearing as, like, you know, the more omniscient, godly-esque figure popping in through their children as avatars. They play favorites, though. Don't trust them. They play favorites. Um, and with that, the twelfth sibling, called Ansi, um, is very jealous and very mean and very bitter, and is like, well, I actually kind of fucking hate all of my siblings, um, and I'm gonna actually tear society down, um, <laughs> and girl boss gaslight gatekeep my way through this, male wife mansplain manipulate, um, cause he's just a bastard like that. So, in this, one of the things he ends up getting the ball rolling over is something involving a rifflin named Ori Crax Velikos. Heart made that name up, so if you have any sort of beef over naming someone Ori Crax Velikos, you can take it directly to Heart's DMs. Um, also known as the Vulture, because being a rifflin, sometimes rifflins have masks that look like animal masks. And Ori Grax's mask looked like a vulture. 
outside of this, I actually really like vultures and think they're cool. But in this, this guy's a vulture-themed character who's also a bastard. Um... <laughs> Basically, he has a soul twin. His soul twin is an arcane named Azazel. Azazel's kind of a hothead, but we also like him because he's very earnest and he tries his best, even as though he's dumb at times. He's a very low whiz character. Um, he's a sweetheart, though. Bad things happen to him. Everyone is sad. <laughs> Um, but Auntie puts out all of these murder attempts on Origrax because the thing about, uh, someone who has a guardian angel, uh, like Origrax is, is they're technically considered to be people who will change and shape society's direction, you know, like the chosen one sort of BS, except there's multiple of them at a time, all running around the plane, doing things, having big ideas, you know. Um, and so Origrax, uh, via the manipulations and machinations of stuff, and just generally being, going in the wrong direction for his plans, and, you know, being kind of closed off towards listening to other people's advice, ends up going into this whole spiral that turns him into, you know, dark magic, does bad, dark ritual things, and I'm gonna do some really shady shit, including, um, do bad things to my guardian angel twin. How do you lose your guardian angel twin? You forget to cherish them. That's exactly what he did. Um, and yeah, they, they, he becomes this whole megalomaniac sort of, um, serial killer for a while. Um, it's not ideal, but it gets fixed. They make these things called nails or tombs, and they basically use the fancy blood magic I mentioned earlier to try and separate Azazel from Vulture and their magic spiritual bondy thing going on um, via these 13 nails into the fabric of the plane itself. It's very cool magic stuff. If I had more time, I could go into it, but we don't have more time because more things happen after this. Um... And so they seal Vulture away, and Azazel ends up having um, a whole meltdown over that because of the backlash of the magic. And so he kind of turns into fairy dust in the way of, um, he turned, he, yeah, bad thing, yep, mm-hmm. Um, but it was only the beginning of all of the trouble. <laughs> so... You hold the cradle stone shape. All of these sound weird. What does that mean? You in all caps. What does that mean? Hold. What are you holding? <laughs> what cradle? What shape of stone? What stone in the first place? So basically, you is the um, current title name whatever of a character. And so is hold. Because of BS face stuff. That's their names for us to have for them. Even if it's not their actual names. They're both researchy, rifflin' people. They're doing the research. So the Vagant knows Hold via all of the stuff Hold's involved in in the background. So the Vagant's like, hey, the fucking world's gonna end at some point. And, like, you're kind of important and some stuff you have involved in is important in making sure it doesn't like everything go to complete um garbage fire and holds like i'm gonna get right the fuck on that um and you was archimedes's is 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 apprentice um and they're kind of like they're they're the they they are the girl boss gaslight gatekeep that auntie is in the pockets with um, and they're under Archimedes' apprenticeship because they want to use Archimedes' knowledge for evil. For evil. Um, and so, Yu is weirdly obsessed with Hold, and Hold's not about it, and so it's like they're like these rivals, and not in the homoerotic way. In like the, Hold would lovingly love to push you off of a pier, sort of way. Because Hold's just trying to live their life. And do the science. Um, yeah, you and Auntie, in the pockets together. They're like, we're going to ruin everything. We're going to make everything worse. 
Um, so you manipulate Solvagat via, uh, under the guise of Archimedes asking, get Solvagat to create something that would become stone shape. A sort of, like, dark, sciencey magic thing that would turn the gardeners, like, as in gardeners, every gardeners, um, that was the eventual plan, into, um, these stone creatures that they wanted to be able to control, sort of like, you know, dot, 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 points fingers back at the vulture doing the shady shit with Azazel. Like that, but different, because it didn't work out great with Azazel and Vulture. So this was, like, sort of the more economical, much more evil upgrade plan. You hate to see it. Um... And Hold's doing the cradle stuff to essentially try and preserve as much as they can. Um, and Hold finds out about what Yu's doing. And Hold calls up Solva again, like, Motherfucker, you are not gonna believe this goddamn shit I'm listening to. Um, the world, the end of the world's coming a lot faster than we thought. And Solva gets like, crap. Um, and so Hold goes to do, do the things with finalizing the cradle stuff, and Solvagant goes to try and figure out what's going on with Auntie. And the end of the world coming, mother peckers! Um, so, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot, there's, there's a whole lot of other background stuff going on. Like, I'm just touching on the most basic things, like, there's a whole bunch of other stuff going on with all of the other siblings. Like some of them get some of them get kidnapped and experimented on, and then like some of them are just like you know also trying to help, and then just lots of bad things happening, and a lot more people are both simultaneously aware and not aware because of the distance and the breakdown of communication over time because of Auntie's plans. Um, so basically. Um, where Solvagat is, is also where Auntie was, and Auntie would spy on Solvagat, okay? So that's the location of what's going on that night. So, they're doing things, he starts his dark ritual, the same, around the same time as Yu's like, I'm gonna become fucking fate, I'm gonna take control of everything, I'm gonna girl boss gas like gatekeep hold, um, and so... Bad things happen. So many bad things happen. Everything happens so much. Everything happens at once. So many things. People die. Things are on fire. Things are exploding. Um, it's a lot of chaos. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, the Guardian, with quiescent, gets stone-shaped and trapped. Uh, as the temple's on fire, and Solvagan's dead, and Auntie's dead, and the nothingness is here, being very confused about the dark ritual they got caught up in, and very upset about it, and on the other hand, Holds put, um, their answer, trusted them by Solvagan, they put them in a pod, of, in the cradle system, and goes to go fight you, except you reveals that they have a piece of the anchor. You know that thing that the Guardian swallowed about ten slides ago? Um, and they, you know, gaslight girl boss gatekeep unalive via Minecraft. Um, that's a joke. Um, and they, yeah, and they take care of Hold, but Hold gets that last oogie oohin, and so they basically go to where Hold's supposed to be in the cradle pod system, and they steal their sleepy time chamber. Um, and yeah, the end of the world happens. The sands of the temporal desert within the night realms begins to rise, swallowing everything in sand, rock, and stone over the course of time as survivors attempt to survive, but it ain't working out, chief. And stone-shaped gardeners are running around unaliving people because of the, the limits and functions and all of the BS involved with stone shape and how it's very, very bad, don't do, does bad things to a gardener. And yeah, um, and eventually it becomes the endless desert. And so this is where it begins to tie into the dreamscape, because the dreamscape has, uh, spoiler alert, ties to the Endless Desert and thus the Night Realms. Um, and it has this strange sand that makes people fall to sleep, and it's seemingly endless, so you get trapped wandering around it until you fall asleep or somehow escape. And it's not amazing. Um, but after a point... Um, there's a Rifflin named Sojourn, 
who wakes up out of their cradle pod and comes out into the desert. And thus the he who all of the stuff that you would have to tune into dreamscape stuff to find out comes into play and this is the end of my presentation basically with um i hold up sojourn you don't have a picture of sojourn to look at but i hold them up and i go he who spoiler alert this is a funky he who rifflin tied to a bunch of stuff and we're gonna talk a lot more about night realm stuff in the dreamscape but for now this is the taste everyone gets of night realm stuff because it's very complex. And yeah, that's the end of my presentation. I will take theoretically questions now. Um, I, I hope you all don't mind. Uh, I just dumped that all in your lap and I'm like, okay, you have to live with this now. But yeah.